Welcome everyone to this tutorial on how to create a gamepad navigable pause menu. So the end product is going to look a little something like this. So pretty simple, just resume options and exit that you can navigate with your uh, gamepad and your mouse. I'll leave the source project in the description so you can download it if you want. I am aware that I'm going to explain the things really fast, but if I didn't, the tutorial would last at least 40 minutes. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is under the user interface, create a widget blueprint. We're going to name this pause menu. That. Open it up, and under the designer tab, we're going to use some buttons. So we're going to create three of them. One for resume, one for options, and one for exit. Uh, in our case, our, the option button is not going to do much, because options would actually create another um, pause menu, a, a second one over it, and we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to do a simple thing here. So we're going to do resume. Right here, I'm going to put an options tab and another one for the exit. So resume's only gonna delete the widget and unpause the game. The exit one's gonna close the game, of course, and the options is just gonna display a message for now. So once we've created our buttons here, we can scroll down here and click on the uh, unclick event here. So that's gonna be for the uh, the mouse because our pause menu is gonna be usable with either a mouse or a gamepad. So I'm just gonna create the three of them, just like that. Um, so our uh, events here are going to use other events that we're going to create. So create a custom event. This one's going to be named um, resume. Another one that we're going to create is going to be options. And why am I doing this is that basically instead of having the resume and the options and everything being done twice, one for the gamepad and one feed for the exit, I'm just going to create those events and just call them. So. Uh, so that's going to be our three main events. The exit one is just going to exit the game, of course, so uh, you can type in quit here, so quit game. Uh, the options one, like I said, is just going to display a message for now. Uh, once you get the hang of it, you can create a second menu using the options tab, but for now it's just going to display a message. So we're going to print here. Uh, let's type in options is selected. Like that. And the resume is going to be a bit more complicated. We're not going to do it for now because, like I said, it's a bit more complicated. We're going to have to use something that's going to be in our character later on. So for now, we're just going to use those. So let's add our exit and our options right here. And our resume right here, even though it's not doing anything for now. <clears throat> that's perfect. Now we can delete those. Okay, for compiling, we try that out. Well, actually, no, I forgot. We need to create the actual um, pause command. So what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to go in our character. So for me, it's just the third person uh, classic thing, but you can use whatever character you're using in your game. So we're going to create a uh, event here that's going to be the special right on the gamepad and another one. I'm going to use P, but you can use whatever you want uh, for my pause. So either of those, if they are pressed, it's going to pause the game. Uh, but first of all, that, that's more of a preference than, but what, what I like about a pause menu is that you can add some effects to the uh, the actual game to make it look like you're actually doing something. So what I want to do is to um, add a blur effect on my screen so that uh, the attention of the player is going to be towards the menu and not what's going on in the background, even though it's going to be paused. So what I'll do is I'll create a begin play here and I'm going to create a uh, uh, pause process component. And under the uh, the tabs here, I'm going to use depth of field and I get the uh, Gaussian right here. So that's just going to simply blur the screen. Uh, so I'm going to create here our um, variable. But the thing is, if I just use that at begin play right now, it's just going to like as soon as I start the game, it's going to be blurred. So what I want to do is to actually um, have this be uh, turned off at the beginning of the game. So I just want to create the variable so that I can use it later, but I don't want to actually... Um, oh, I forgot to delete it from the past tutorial I did. Anyways, so um, yeah, I don't want it to be turned on as soon as the game starts. So what I'll do is I'll take the node here and I'm going to type set enable and just uncheck it. So that way it's going to be created but not turned on. So that's our pause process effect. So that is just to set up. So you can put it pretty much anywhere. As soon, just create it as soon as the game starts. So for our, um, our thing here, our pause, we're going to, of course, pause the game. 
Uh, afterwards, we're going to get our pulse process effect and we're going to enable it. So that's going to blur the screen. So just check that right here. And uh, afterwards, what we're going to do is to create the widget uh, that we've created earlier. So the, the pause right here. And of course, we're going to add it to the viewport. Oh, and of course, what you'll need to do uh, is to get your uh, player controller here and to show the uh, the mouse because if you want the player to be able to click with the mouse well it needs to be uh, shown because by default it's not so we're gonna get um let me check here uh show mouse right here so plug this in and check it so that the mouse is on screen okay so that our, our pause menu is pretty much complete so if, if i start the game and press p it's gonna pause like we see it's a blur uh if i click options it's gonna option select it that's perfect resume uh it's not working for now because we didn't program it but exit works so that's perfect for now we have our simple pause menu uh you can use it using the uh the mouse uh and nothing with the gamepad for now so our resume we're gonna do uh that for uh, for start so what we're gonna do is of course unpause the game uh, afterwards, if we want to um, actually remove the blur, what we need to do is to get our uh, component that we, our variable that we created earlier. So we're gonna get all characters, uh, get all actors, sorry, and we're gonna get our character. And for each, let's plug this in. And for each in the array element, we're gonna get our uh, post process effect that we created. Excellent. And using this, I'm just gonna take out this part and set enable and we're going to leave it unchecked. So that's going to remove our blur effect. Okay, so we unpause the game, we rem remove the blur. Now, um, we need to, uh, first of all, we need to remove the mouse, of course. So again, uh, we need to um, get our player controller, show mouse cursor right here and leave it unchecked. And the last thing we need to do is to actually remove from parent the actual widget. So that should be pretty much it for the resume. So if I try it, click pause, options still working, everything's working. If I click resume, we're back in the game and the blur effect is gone. So that's all working. So right now we have a menu uh, for a mouse. So it's pretty simple to do. Uh, but the complicated thing is to actually have the gamepad working because you cannot use uh, the simple commands that I used um, in the, the character. You need to get the player controller so what we're going to do is get player controller and we're going to get analog um, stick state and we're going to use the, use the left stick, but that, that's just a preference thing. You can use whatever you want uh, and we're going to get the stick Y. So what we're going to check basically is we're going to use an event tick and if our stick is either pointing up or down, uh, we're going to do an event. So I'm just going to create those things right here. Boolean um, that's checking if the stick is either pressed up or down and I'm gonna use 0 0.3 because if you use 0 0.01 or something like that really close to zero um, the person that's playing sh could barely hit the, the, the joystick and it's gonna go around in the menu and you don't want that so like I said we're gonna use the event tick right here and we're gonna create a sequence for now we're just gonna use the first one but later on you're gonna use the uh, the other part and um, actually a third one as well so just branch the false into this Actually, what I'll do is I'll actually switch them up uh, just so I have the uh, plus one on top and the minus one on the bottom. You can do whatever you want, but I just prefer that way. So just I'll switch those. That should be perfect. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable that's going to be our index. So that's going to be the place that our gamepad is pointing at the moment. So we can leave it at zero for now. That's perfect. So we're going to get it. Um, and what we're going to do is if the controller is pointing up or down, we're going to change that index. Um, so let's say resume is zero, option is one, exit is two. So what we're going to do is to actually um, add one to the index. So integer plus integer and we'll leave it to one. Um, but we're going to actually need to um, set to set it right here and we're not going to just leave it to one because if we get to two and we need to go th to zero we need to have a modulo because we're not going to get to three if we just add one so let's get a modulo three here so basically what's go that going to do is that we're going to stop uh going down we're going to do zero one two zero one two instead of zero one two three etc 
So same thing's gonna be um, right here, so minus one. Uh, the only thing is we're gonna have a branch here because if we are um, smaller than zero, so if we get to the negative one, what we need to do is go back to two. So we're gonna have a branch and we're gonna check if our integer is smaller than zero. If it is, we're gonna set it, um, we're gonna set it uh, to uh, two. And if it's not, then we're just gonna use our minus that we've created. So just plug this right here. Excellent. So our index is changed properly, but for now it's not doing much, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make the buttons change color to indicate where the gamepad index is right now. So we're gonna get all our buttons here. Whoop, not set, just get, there we go. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the, um, the background color. So just drag one out, set background color. We're gonna plug all those in. So that's gonna be our not selected color. So we're gonna have everything be changed to gray. And depending on the index, we're gonna change only one to another color. So that, for e whatever index, we're all gonna change the buttons to gray. And then uh, we're gonna use a switch on int right here. So we're gonna plug in our index and it's gonna be able to select either uh, the first, second or third button. So again, we're gonna use set background color here and when I change the color to the selected color, I'm gonna use a bluish like this. You can do, of course, whatever you want. Um, and we're gonna duplicate that a couple of times, plug these in. And that's going to change our color of the selected button, basically. Excellent. Um, okay. Let me compile that. Oh, yeah, I forgot to plug in my buttons. So just plug in the buttons, of course. Like that. Excellent. Okay, so now if we try, the thing that's going to happen is that it's going to change really, really fast because, of course, it's a tick event. So every frame, it's going to check and change. So what we we don't want that, of course. So we're going to use a delay. And our delay is going to be of something rather short, like 0.3 or 0.2 seconds would do. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, do once event. So instead of just going every time, we're going to just get a do once that's going to uh, let one pass and then block everything else until the delay is over. So do ones like this, both of them. And after our delay here, um, I'm going to put 0 0.3 for now. We're going to have a sequence that's going to reset both because we don't actually know. We can check, but it's just simpler if we reset both of them at the same time. Because anyways, if one of them passes, the other one shouldn't. So just reset both of them. It's one of them is going to be already open anyways. And right now, it's a lot better. So it's not going to scroll super, super fast. But our button is still not working. We're just scrolling through the menus. So what we need is to actually have the input um, for the button, the X button, and, uh, for example, in the uh, Xbox controller, um, to be able to select something. So I'm going to use the, um, the key press here. And I'm going to select on the gamepad the face button um, the bottom one. Again, you can use whatever button you want, but that's just a classic one. And I'm also going to have a uh, button for the um, the special right. Whoop, not special left, special right. To unpause the game, because th you can either press resume or just click start to resume the game. That's just a uh, simpler, simpler thing. It's classic, I would say. Anyways, so we're going to have a branch here. And we're going to plug in from our uh, sequence here. And so if the person selected something, what we want is to have a switch on int. That's going to use, again, our index. So just drag this out, plug the index in. I have three selections here. And we're going to use our custom event that we created earlier. So resume, options, and of course, exit. So pretty simple. Just when you click, it's, it's checking the index. And whatever it is on, it's going to be selected. And our thing right here is going to be uh, a branch again, and we're going to um, unpause the game, basically. So it's going to be a resume. But there is a problem with that. If we try that right now and we try to pause, it's going to do something like this. Because what's happening is that I'm pressing start to create the menu, but I'm also checking start to unpause the game. 
so that's not gonna work. Now, there's many methods to go by that. You can use a delay with a do once or something like that. What I'm gonna do is to have a timer on it. So I'm gonna do time in uh, pause, and I'm gonna have a float. And it's just basically gonna check how long have I been in the pause menu. You can use that to do multiple things. Uh, I'm just gonna use it to check uh, if it's been longer than a certain period of time to be able to unpause. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'll just drag that out, add a float to it. And from my tick event right here, I'm gonna drag it in and add it. And if it's um, bigger than, uh, let's say 0.5, you can put something smaller, but 0.5 is safe. And plug this in. And that should do. Uh, whoops. Oh, I forgot to set it. Wait. Um, so I need to set my time pause because it's not adding much right now. Um, okay, so drag out your, um, your um, time in pause here. And we're going to set it. Just plug this in, um, check that, plug this in the branch, and we're going to get our thing here and plug in the set. Now that should work. Pause. That's working. Unpause. There we go. Unpause. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, just going to change my 0 0.3. It's a bit too long. 0 0.2 should be better. There we go. Okay, so our menu is pretty much working right now. We got our um, start that's working. We got our index. The only thing left is our event construct here that we're going to set the colors just so that when the menu opens, it's going to be right in the uh, the gamepad mode because what we had earlier was uh, not in the right colors uh, before I changed. Uh, I, I click a button with the gamepad. So that's pretty much it. Um, we got our menu here that's working either with the gamepad or with the mouse. Now, of course, the mouse right now is just highlighting the thing, so it's not changed the color like um, the gamepad, so that's a bit... Um, well, it's not perfect, but it's just a simple tutorial. You can change the color and make it like the gamepad. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions or um, suggestions for later tutorials, just leave them in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer as soon as I can.